UFC Fight Night, UFC Vegas 87, Rosa Strike versus Gaziev takes place this weekend. And I'm going to go through the full card breakdown and in detail predictions, starting with the early prelim opener of Loic Rajabov versus Abdul Karim Al Sawadi. Who cares? Who, are, who gives a fuck about this shit fight? Abdul Al Karim. Is a better fighter than Loic Rajbov, who's absolute dog shit. I know he's got a V at the end of his name, but you can't trust all of them. Uh, Abdul Kareem Al Sawadi is not bad. You know, he beat George Hardwick, looked great in that fight, chopped the legs well. He's got good grappling as well. He's a serious fighter in that division, he's got heat in his hands. Um, he's got a decent chin, took some shots off Hardwick, and I think he's going to go out there and beat. The likes of Loic Rajbov, who did beat Ribovich, which is solid. But he kind of just panic grappled the whole time and got a few takedowns. I don't see that happening against a short, stocky guy like Abdul Karim Al Sawadi. So I think this will just end up being him losing and looking embarrassed on the feet. I think both guys are good wrestlers. But I think Abdul's a way better striker. That's the difference. Little Garage Bob got destroyed by Mateus Rebecki. I'm going to go for uh, Abdul Kareem Al Sawadi to get the win here. This off this card. Shit card, I should say. We move on at the card. Vinicius Oliveira versus Bernardo Sapage. I haven't had time to look for this shit card, but if I had to predict someone here. Bernardo, Bernardo Sapage does train at Training All Stars. Or, uh, no, training All-Stars. All-Stars training. Well, same thing. All-Stars training center. Um. He is good on the feet, it looks like. Ah, uh, who cares? Uh. I'll go Vinicius Oliveira. I think he's a better fighter. He lost to Ali Taleb, but he's new about this debut for a while, so we're... Sapage is just coming in now. I don't trust that. So I'm going to go for... He's supposed to train for Yanis Gamori, whoever the hell that is. But still, I got Vinicius Oliveira. I think he's a way more better fighter, I guess. And I think he knew about this date more, you know? So I got him winning this one. We move on. Up the card. Christian Leroy Duncan versus Claudio Ribeiro. I have to go for CLD. I like Claudio Ribeiro. He's dangerous here. But CLD with momentum better, in my opinion. And Ribeiro lost to Kopilov, who is good, but not as good as people make him out to be. And I think we found that out against Hernandez. I gotta go for CLD, though. Look great against Tululin. Lost to Petrosian, but I think that was his UFC debut jitters. You know? Big jitters in his UFC. Oh, yeah, his debut was against Tadrovich. But fuck off. That wasn't even a fight. That was his real UFC debut against Petrosian. And uh, I think the jitters kind of got to him. I think he respected Petrosian too much in his power, probably. I don't know what CLD was doing in that fight. I would like to know. But, um, yeah, I'm going to have to go with... Uh, I'm going to have to go with... Um, what's his name? Christian Leroy Duncan. I think he's better all around. Maybe he's not, he doesn't have much power. He does have power, but not as much as Ribeiro. To shut your lights off. But he's way more dynamic. Way better on the ground if it hits there as well. And Ribeiro lost to Abdul Razak al -Sand. Whenever this guy faces someone that has power, it's power as well. Like Abdul and Roman. He fails and goes down. But if he fights guys that are soy. Like Holmes. He can win. And I don't think Sealy's soy. I don't think he's got power either. But I think he's too dynamic. And just too skilled. For, uh, what's his name? Too skilled for Ribeiro, in my opinion. So I got CLD winning by decisions or TKO. Ribeiro gives up doing something. We move on up the card. Javid Basharat versus Eamon Zahabi. I gotta go Javid. Eamon Zahabi's good, though. He's a good underdog, but I just don't see him beating uh, Javid. Javid's a bit overrated, though. For gonna be real, cause every fight he does just struggle against someone. Like you never see like a masterclass. Like 
Mateus Mendonca is not terrible. Uh, he is terrible, though. He should have won against, what's his name, last weekend, Jesus Aguilar. Um, but still, <coughs> he isn't good. All right, and Javid make it competitive. He makes it competitive each time. Maybe he was slightly a tad bit ahead against uh, Victor Henry. But I just don't trust Eamon Zahabi to do something here. I don't think he can win in tit-for-tat range. I think he's got good KO power, but he couldn't KO Ricky Tercios. Who is just walking forward, asking to be KO'd. To be honest with you. Well, no. Tercios and that fight wanted nothing to do with the stand-up exchanges at all. Wanted just a tit-for-tat range with Zahabi. And just he lost. And Zahabi didn't do anything. He didn't push forward. Try to make a brawl. He was like, okay, tit-for-tat. We'll do tit-for-tat, bitch. And Zahabi won. Because he's better than Tercios. I gotta go for Zayman Zahabi, though. He did beat... Qu- no, 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 I'm not gonna go for Zahabi. I'm going for Javid. He did beat AoE Quilang, but AoE Quilang is not that good. Uh, it's just... That's his best win. I don't trust Zahabi, man. I'm gonna have to go for Javid. I think he's a way better skilled fighter. Way more versatile. Way more dynamic. And I think he's just gonna go out there and beat Zayman Zahabi. Similar to Ribeiro CLD. I think he's just better all around. Has talent. We move on. Up the card. Ludovic Klein versus AJ Cunningham. I gotta... I don't even know who the fuck this guy is. Fuck this stupid bitch card. Klein wins. KO. Who cares about this fucking can crushing bitch? Klein knew about this date. They're just bringing these American fucking losers from Southeast US. Fuck him. Going Klein. He's better. Yeah, good grappling. Good KO artist. He can fail sometimes at range, but who has a reach advantage here? Klein or Cunningham? Who has a height and reach advantage? Klein has a reach advantage. He is shorter by three inches. Don't think it makes a difference. I think Klein wins. We move on. Up the card. Um, Eric Anders versus Jamie Pickett. 2024. Eric Anders versus Jamie fucking Pickett. Why is he still in the UFC? What does he? What does the company need with him? I like, did he? I swear, these some of these guys screw Dana's wife. I bet you they fucking do. And then it's like, oh, another fight in the UFC. Fucking annoying. Eric Anders wins. He's better than Jamie Pickett. I I don't think Anders is all that great. But at least he has something. I don't think Jamie Pickett would make it close against Mark Andre Barrio. I think he would lose easily. And I think the Pickett lost to cut Pickett lost to Kyle Dawkins. At least Anders was able to get the win over him twice. Once in a grappling match and one in a real fight. Destroyed him as well. Where Pickett lost to Dawkins. How? How do you lose to a Dawkins brother? You're a bum. Yeah, we move on. Up the card. Anders wins. Uh, Matt Schnell versus Steve Ursag on the main card. I'm going to go for Steve Ursag. He's better than Matt Schnell. But Matt Schnell's tricky here. But I can't pick Steve. I can't pick Matt Schnell. He doesn't have a chin. He doesn't have a neck. Yeah, he does have a neck. He has a long neck, and that's bad for MMA. Ian Gary will fucking get brutalized one day. Um, just Jeff Neal was a pussy and was too scared of getting countered. When, oh my god, if Neal just... Gary wasn't going to counter him. But if Neal just didn't respect the power of Gary, he would have fucking laid him out. But he was too much of a pussy. Still should have won the fight, in my opinion, though. Um, I gotta go Steve. I don't think Steve Versig's all that. I don't. He didn't look great against Costa, but he won on the scorecards. 29-28. I just don't think Matt Schnell is good at anything. He's like a Ryan Hall. Like, he's got BJJ and that's it. No good offensive takedowns. No footwork. No big power on the feet. He's no, he's no danger anyway. You don't look at Matt Schnell like, oh shit. Better watch out of the shot from Matt Schnell. Steve Ersek, it's like, oh shit. Okay, Steve Ersek could drop you all of a sudden and put you on your ass. All right? And I think that's going to be the case here. I think he'll drop Matt Chanel. 
I don't think he'll put him out. I could see him failing to go for a finish early. But I think later on, Mastro will get more of a comeback. But I think Sturzheg's probably going to get the second round as well. And maybe Mastro gets the third. So I'll go for Steve Ersig, 29-28, just beating up Chanel. Just winning on damage. We move on up the guard. Umar Namagomedov versus Bekzak Almakan. I'm going to surprisingly go for Umar Namagomedov. I think he's a little bit better than uh, Bekzak Almakan. I think so. Uh, surprisingly. I know it's a big surprise. Um, Bekzak Almakan is actually decent though. I just don't think... I think he's frail. I think he's weak looking. And it's Umar Namagomedov. I don't care if... It's not fucking... Who's his last opponent? Jan Faraz. Mateus Gloria. Mario Mastromurni. That looks like an Italian guy's name. No, it's Argentinian. Whatever. Um, he's decent, though. And he's good. He's a good prospect. You'd think he'd beat, like... like I think this guy would beat the fucking, I don't know, the Eamon Zahabi of the world, you know? But still, he'll lose to Umar. Umar's training. He's big for bantamweight. Got good stand-up. This guy has no weaknesses, uh, Bexat. Bexat? Fucking hell. I'll get used to it. But still, Bexat doesn't have much weaknesses on the feet. But Umar's Umar. And I think he's going to go out there and get it done. Team Habib. As much as you can dislike them all you want, they have really fucking good game planning. And I think, you know, I think he's going to get it done. I know Volk has good game planning as well, but Makashev over Volk is just an example that they have the best game planning in the UFC. And I think he'll get the job done. We move on. Up the card. Alex Perez versus Mohamed Makayev. I'm definitely going to go for Makayev. I think Makayev's eventually going to get exposed. By, like, a Brandon Moreno. I don't even know anymore. Moreno seems like he's lost. But, like, you know what I'm talking about. Like, a Manel Cap. Uh, well, Pantoja Champ is obviously an option. Uh, Roy Val can maybe give him issues. But I just don't think Perez can... I, dude, Mikhaev actually could get the title. Because he probably... I don't know. I, he could actually beat everyone but Pantoja. I think Pantoja is going to be a tricky one for him. Uh, and Roy Val, probably. But still, I think he will beat Perez. Perez isn't good. He's just a loser. He's backed out almost every fight besides the Pantoja where he showed up. Probably, you know, he, probably, he probably showed up for that one just to say, oh, yeah, he'll get a title shot if you win. He's probably like, yeah, man, let's go. I got a title shot if I win against Pantoja. <coughs> I got to go for Mikhaev. I think he can outmuscle Perez on the ground. I think he's got good third round finishing instincts. I think he'll get another third round finish here with Rene Choke over Alex Perez. Yeah, I think he gets it done. I don't think Perez has any danger on the feet. I think Makayev can beat him there as well. I think this is a really good matchup for Muhammad Makayev. Really good matchup. Oh, you can hate him all you want. This is a really good stylistic matchup for him. And I think he gets it done. Submitting Tim Elliott's not, not. That's no joke. Could have been losing that fight, I get it, but he gets his third round finishes. I don't know what it is, but I think he'll get it done here again with a third round finish. We move on up the guard. Vitor Petrino versus Tyson Pedro. I think Petrino can outgrapple Pedro. I think he can. Because Pedro lost to Shogun fucking Hua. Proved or not, I don't care. Like, I think Petrino has underrated grappling. Because taking that marching Pratt shield in hindsight is pretty impressive. And on the feet, Pedro can catch him maybe. But I think Petrino also can win there as well. And um, we can look at these performances like... Oh, but Pedro KO'd Anton Tercalj. And Petrino looked shit against Tercalj, but won. Okay. Uh, at least at least Petrino won. To where he beat Medeski Bukowskis and Tyson Pedro... Lost to Medestis Bukowskis on short notice across the world. Flew across the world from the UK and lost to Medestis Bukowskis. Or, no, no, Bukowskis threw, threw, uh, he flew from the UK, beat Tyson Pedro. Should have phrased it that way. 
I gotta go for uh I gotta go for uh I gotta go for uh Petrino. I think he's good. Had a great KO last fight. And Pedro beat to couch at the end of the day. Not a great win. So I'm gonna go for Petrino. I think he gets it done. We move on up the card. Jarzinho Rosenstreich versus Shamil Gaziev. I was gonna go Gaziev, but I've seen all these other content creators thoughts on this fight. I'm gonna go Rosenstrike as well. Uh, yeah, I thought Gazia was easily gonna win this. Like I thought he was gonna take down Rosenstrike and sub him under a minute. But I, I've been thinking some stuff recently about this fight. Probably why this video is taking forever to come out. Well, just cause I didn't want to post this, but I have to. But Gazia, he looked good against Bidet. Bidet. I kind of think it was more on Bidet than Shamil Gaziev's performance. Because Bidet, I think, right when the fight started, he looked like he was like, Ah, oh, fuck, I lost. Let's try to back up and recover. Didn't even get hit once. He fought like a pussy against, uh, against Gaziev. Like, no one knew he was going to lose that. And Gaziev walked him down and left so many openings in that fucking fight. Why won't he do the same? He's always going to back up against Rosenstrike and play the Cyril Gone game. He's going to come in against Rosenstrike. He's going to come in. I don't think Gaziev's grappling's all that. He's got good grappling, but I don't think he's going to grapple against Rosenstrike. He didn't do it against Bidet. Um, I, I don't think he's going to grapple against Rosenstrike. And, and I, I can just see him coming in, trying to land combos and getting countered. With a counter left hook. Can't you just see it? Rosenstrike's really good at that. I can see Gazia coming in and getting clipped right on the chin and put out with ground and pound shots. I'm going to go for Rosenstrike first round KO. As Gazia comes in with his chin wide up in the air. And he throws retarded combinations. You're not in Ganu, kid. I'm going to go for Rosenstrike. I think he's got a lot of power to, on the back foot. And I think he's going to improve his takedown defense just in case. Gazia trust shooting. So I'm going to go for Rosenstrike. Yeah. I think Gaziev, I think Gaziev is a is a well all round all rounded fighter, but he's incomplete. He has openings. There can be expl he can be exploited. I'm gonna go for Rosenstrike. Strike. Yeah, lost to Almeida, but Almeida has Almeida's Almeida. He's not a fat slob like Gaziev. You know, he just is not a fat slob like Gaziev. He's got BJJ under it as well. And he KO'd Chris Dawkins. I know you might say that shit. But Derek Lewis took till the second round of KO Dawkins. Curtis Blade took the second round of KO Dawkins. Rosenstrick did it in the first, under a minute. That's impressive if you look at it that way. And, uh, yeah. I think Rosenstrick wins. <sighs> yeah, Volkov KO'd him, but Volkov's a bit of a weirdo. And he's tricky to fight. He got caught. And a way early stoppage there. See, I'm gonna go for Rosa Strike. I think he's better than. I think he's better than uh, Gaziev. And notice Almeida, Volkov, Blades, Gone and Ganu, all made to be something. Gone and Blades top contender. Gone, then became an interim champ. Blades has always been that top guy. Ganu became champ. Volkov always been that top guy. Um, outside the top five. Almeida's that guy now. So it's always someone special that beats Rosenstrike, I notice. I don't think Gaziev's that. Yeah, like, subscribe, thank you for watching. Peace.